Welcome, welcome, welcome to Mount Pleasant, North Carolina, home of the best table playing in North Carolina. <laughs> we would like my sister and I, this is our church, and we would like to welcome you to Mount Pleasant Baptist Church today. Y'all look so good. Big crowd. Y'all have fun. Laugh a lot. <laughs> I would like to introduce my sister. This is Mom. Hey, Mom. Hey, Mom. And hey, I'm Myrtle. Hey, Myrtle. And like I said, this is our church. Now, sister, you tell them where to go for the bathroom. Now, you go out that door, and you can go down either <coughs> set of stairs, and the women's is on that side, and the men's is on that side. <laughs> There's a couple of things we need to ask you to turn off. We've heard tell of something called a cell phone. We need you to turn them off. <laughs> <laughs> Myself. 
they had the eat and run on the west side of town. And I tell you, that is some good eating. On Tuesday they had pork chops and rice with a scoop of vanilla or sherbet included. <laughs> you know, um, old Big Head has um, been very generous with his cooking lessons um, ever since Mama passed away. Sorry, I, I miss her so much. <laughs> what happened to our tree? Miss Mom, Miss Carla, I, I don't know what to tell you about those lights. I guess electricity is one of God's mysteries. I mean, I don't know about those wires and doohickeys and plugs and fuses and all. I tell you, um, oh my goodness, we still got fire so good. It's warmer in the bed than here. Now watch out, that tree's tipping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know those Christmas trees are Miss Mom and Miss Myrtle. And they also decorated the tree that we're going to be decorating outside. We should be appreciated. I wonder if you got to say, oh, just like I said, she, she did. No man, when he lights the candle, will set it under a vessel or underneath the bed. Will sit on top of a candlestick. So all the enters may enter, may see the light. And that's Luke 8, 16. No, so we're not going to cover our light tonight. We're going to spread the name of Jesus Christ in song and in hope. Did I just hear the bus pull up? Not yet. Well, you know, <laughs> this tune will tell you. Oh, where are my manners? This is Judy Sanders of the Sanders Family Singers. I don't sing much, I sign. That's true. No, the Lord didn't bless her with a beautiful voice. <laughs> <laughs> if we get a deaf person in here, they won't get a thing. <laughs> she signs. This is like an angel slapping her wings. <laughs> After all, it is Christmas Eve. And Eat and run is closed, so I had the sandwich down to my house for some wonderful chicken and dumplings. You ladies have been such a blessing to me. Between your kindness and, and Big Head's uh, cooking lessons, I got to rock and cook up a storm. We had chicken and dumplings, and we had some, some turnip greens, and, um, and one of the best batches of biscuits I think I made yet. And, uh, <laughs> and since it was a special occasion, I pulled down one of the cans of corn that the cans of corn that Mama put up before she before she passed in August. Every time I, I see a ball jar, <laughs> it's just like look at Mom. Here they are. Just like I promised the Sanders family, ladies and gentlemen. I mean.
Strengthen ye the weak hands. Confirm the feeble knees. Say to those who are fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your Lord will come with a vengeance. Mother. <laughs> yeah, it is. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We are sorry we had to make you all wait, but you know, Brother Oglethorpe here, he would not hear of not having us down to his place for supper. And the smoke, they tremble with fear, Exodus 2018. Woo-wee! I'm afraid he's right. You know, this is our fourth trip to Mount Pleasant, and, and we're so glad to be here. I was afraid with the war coming on and off that, well, we might not be able to make the trip, and but I'm glad we did with my, my son, Dennis. He, uh, he ships off to basic training day after tomorrow. And I, I'm sure some of your families are in the same way, but I'm glad we made the trip. If, if, if for no other reason than for Brother Oglethorpe's supper, you know, there ain't no finer feller than, than Mervyn here, but his bread, like Ephraim in the Bible, it's hard, flat, burn on one side, raw on the other. <laughs> uh, guess we need to sing. Come on, Pam. <laughs>
And when we first started, it was me and Stanley and Mike and Mama. God rest her soul. Amen. Well, and when we first started, we would sing it almost every year in the state wilds. That's right. Mm -hmm. wow. And they almost won. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We always came in second place. Came in second place, no matter how hard we practiced, no matter how much we added into our music, second place to the Thistlethorn Sisters. <laughs> Sounds like you're listening, don't it? This is a Well, I figured out the best way to beat them was to marry one of them. So I picked out the purtiest and the singingest Thistlethorn sister there was, and I married her. And she's sitting right there. And that's when the Sanders started winning. <laughs> yeah, she's right. You know, Vera, you can't tell to look at her now. She used to be a pretty little thing. <laughs> well, it, it, anyway. She <laughs> started having us. Yeah, yeah I mean, she started having you, but, but you know, what, what, what happens here is Vera started having family and children and all that. That's what happened. They fuss at me for talking too much. I guess I do sometimes, but it, 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 anyway, Deer started having children, and, and then Mama, Mama went on to be with her eternal Savior. Yeah, you know, you know Mama was called home too. Yeah, I, I know Brother Uncle Corbin. We sure do miss her. Don't we? Yeah, but well, about four years ago. <laughs> We, we started back on the gospel circuit. We started right here at Mount Pleasant. And, and, and you know, it was a little bit different this time around because things had, been, things had changed quite a bit. We was doing a lot of singing on the radio and they had us making record albums. And, and you know, we, we questioned at first whether that was the work of the devil or not. We weren't sure, so we prayed about it a lot. And, and we talked to all our fans. And, and we started to realize, you know, maybe it's a blessing. Is it a matter of fact? It might be a miracle. That's right. Because the Sanders family could, could sing on those records, and you all, our fans, could be listening to us at your home while we're actually back in Siler City at our filling station pumping gas and selling moon pies. That's right. <laughs> now, now my brother Stanley here. No, 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 no. I was gonna tell him about Stanley. Oh, I don't need to be told about. Him. Ooh, no. Oh, yeah, he yeah. is. You're part of my sermon app. Oh. Isaiah 66, 19. Only the Commission Islands have not heard his fame. Everybody knows Stanley's famous. Every time you turn on the radio, he's on it. And he just come back from California. Oh, don't go on about all that. Now, Stanley, you told us that the only reason you're here tonight is to come sing with us. That's true. Only pride comes before contention. Proverbs 13, 13 10. 2 <coughs> Corinthians 8, 24. Show ye to them and to the churches the proof of your love and of our motion. <laughs> uh, but as we've been told from the beginning, we should love one another. Mm -hmm. Call it for me, family. First John 3, 11. Yeah. Amen. Well, as you can tell, uh, we're all about to pop our galluses. We are so proud uh, of Stanley here, but Brother Old before, if that's part of your sermon, Ed, then I'll just let the people say, we are so proud to be here, and and I'll say this, you know, it's so nice to spend this Christmas, the day of our Savior's birth, with such wonderful people, and for me to spend this time with my family celebrating the birth of our Savior. Family, let's praise Him.
<laughs> As preacher, choir director, chairman of finance, director of education, and youth director, I want to welcome you to Mount Pleasant Baptist Church. And I want to thank you for sharing your beautiful voices with us tonight. You're, very You're so welcome. welcome. I will sing as long as I'm alive. I will praise my Lord as long as I have my being. Psalm 114, 30. Amen. Thank you, Miss Sanders. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> and nothing gives me more joy than to know that the star needs has gathered us all together just like the wise men. So we can praise the Lord Jesus in song and in revelation. Amen. Special greeting to y'all up, you folks up tonight from, um, let's see, uh, got some folks from Cane Creek and from, um, from uh, uh, Sawmill Flats Primitive and, yes. and from the Little Hunky River Church of God. Special thanks to those of you from the Sawmill Flats Primitive uh, for lending us Brother Wayman Lunsford uh, during my absence while uh, Mother became sick and was called home in August. Um, I, uh, hmm, I don't see him in the congregation tonight, but uh, you can just tell him that uh, Mount Pleasant was uh, just carried away with the power of his preaching. Miss Maud and Miss Myrtle went on and on. Amen. How the witness has rattled under his message. And, and our congregation didn't, didn't fall off one single bit. And our, and our offering place all stayed brimming full. So uh, you can tell him we'll, we'll have him back real soon. <laughs> now, me, I. I think about a preacher style that's a little less hurried, a little less nervous, but that's just me. <laughs> Brother Oglethorpe, haven't you always said that your, your favorite preacher was the Apostle Paul? Absolutely. Dennis, now you've always said about the Apostle Paul that in your readings, the Apostle Paul <laughs> said something about preachers. What was that? When I came to preach, I did not come with eloquence or enticing speech, but in demonstration of the Spirit, so that your faith might stand in the power of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Merle. You are welcome. Yeah. Murphy, do you know a country kind of Christmas? Why, well, yes, 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 I do. Well, good. I think we're going to sing it for you, and it's for you. Why don't you go back here and sit down, and we're going to sing it right back here. This is for you, it's special. <laughs> Miss Annie Trollinger, 
Poor lady's got the facial neuralgia, can't even think. You need to remember, remember our brother Chuck Lloyd, he's got a lot of bowel bless his heart. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Ms. Betty Jean Evans, the uh, secretary down at the Pixel Plant, said that uh, we were past ours, swelled up twice his size, and none of the doctors could figure out what's wrong with him. Now, if you folks have some time during the holidays, y'all need to run down to his house and pay old Wilbur a visit. Uh, the doctor said they were going to draw some water off of it, but he's He's still at home, so puffed up big as a tick. So the visit was doing some good. Speaking of the Mount Pleasant Pickle Plant, you know, um, you know, our bookkeeper there, and uh, we've gone to the, the two working shifts, and with Mr. Roosevelt putting us in the war and everything, they said we might go to three. Wow. And I declare, I don't know how we're going to squeeze another pickle out of that plant. <laughs> We've pickled everything within 30 miles of here. <laughs> the next trouble we go in the brine. Who would have guessed that the English, the French, and all the people over across there could not have done any battle without our little girls. <laughs> and speaking of the war, I got the, uh, the best telephone call I got just the other night uh, from Miss Hazel Bishop. She called me up and said, uh, they found Roy Jr. over at Pearl Harbor. Oh, man. Oh, man. Hazel and Roy Sr. and I have seen some long and, and tearful nights. Yes. Pray for that boy. And praise the Lord, he's all fit to save him. We folks need to continue to remember all of our young men in, in prayer, those that are already over there and those that are fixing to go on the way over. Dennis, that means you're one of them. Yes. Lord, please keep our boys safe. Lord, please help the war ensue. And God bless Mr. Roosevelt and Mr. Churchill and Mr. Solid. Amen. Amen. <laughs> what I think about what, what you mothers are going through. And I think about my mama. Reverend Oak, you are so sorry. Reverend you are so right. Times like this are so hard on men, but there's so much worse on mamas. You know, my twins are almost grown or so they tell me every five minutes. Well, I've got an idea. Okay. Well, what if? You remember that little specialty tune that that they used to sing at Christmas. Yes. Y'all remember that? Yes. <laughs> well, you know, what if they did? Would it be okay for them to do that trip? That it would make, it make yes. you feel better. I bet it would make all the mothers out here so just have a smile in their heart. And we don't know when we're going to be singing again together, so it would be wonderful. We can't sing that song. Why? Because we do not remember the words. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> They remember it. We cannot sing that song because it talks about Santa Claus, and you cannot sing about oh. Santa Claus in the Baptist church. Well, oh. I just don't got the sign up. See? Yeah. Stand up and pack it. You can sing that song that's for your mama. I mean, this mama's for her donkey thing. You've got to be fine to sing it for your mama. First Corinthians 10 14. Therefore I say unto you, flee from idolatry. I speak to sensible people. Just for yourselves, what I say. Uh, now, now, you sing that song for your mom. Yes. You yes. sing that song for your mom. Uh, oh, stand right yeah. there. I'm going to lie to you. Ready? Yeah. yeah. All right.
don't only look funny. Excuse me, I said that backwards. <laughs> they, they, don't, they don't only talk funny. They look funny too. <laughs> Them is some of the longest noses I ever did see. And yeah, I would have to give you a picture for now, me. brother. We weren't winning any beauty contests with our skin heads and everything. <laughs> That's true. Now, but now, now, Stanley, he had it worse down at Norfolk in Naval Naval Station because he was he was on the kitchen patrol. Oh man, I remember this one time I was writing a letter home to Mama. I said, "Dear Mama, I've been making beds. I've been mopping floors. I've been sweeping. I've been peeling potatoes all day. When I get home." I sure am going to make a girl a good wife one day. <laughs> you know, there was this one boy, this one boy, he was from the north. It was, it was in my unit. And he had the longest name I had ever heard. It was as long as my arm. Townsend Wesley Alcott the third. He's a dollar a year man. He is so rich, he wouldn't even take the pay. It's good pay too. I was glad to get it. But you know, I called him Wesley. Most of the fellas, they called him the third. The third? Or something like that. I think you can figure it out. But I called him Wesley. He was the first real rich city boy I had ever met in the flesh. Now, now, Stanley back me up on this. When we got off the bus for basic training, as soon as you got off the bus, those drill sergeant, sergeants started hollering at you and calling you names like Bushwhacker, uh, Hillbilly, uh, Peckerwood, Ridge Runner, Goober Grabber. If you uh, jockey don't know what 30 inches is, then you stand one tree length in front of the man in front of you. That was bad. That was bad. But you know what? None of them vexed me as much as that Wesley character did. You know, I told you I called him Wesley because that's his name. <laughs> you know what he called me? He didn't call me nothing. He wouldn't say my name. He wouldn't even speak to me. All he did was look down that nose of his, that long nose of his, like I was no bigger than or no better than a gnat. Huh. He had been to college. I'd had to drop out of school when, when, when I was old enough to plow the fields. You know, he, he, his daddy owned buildings in New York City. My daddy was a sharecropper. At night, I'd sit around and I'd sing some of my gospel songs. I didn't sing them loud enough to disturb anybody or anything. I'd say, I, I, I felt close to home singing it. You know what he did? He turned on that radio as loud as he could turn it on and listen to some woman hollering in Italian. He called it opera. He asked me. It sounded like a cow having its cat pulled. <laughs> well, I figured... I figured once, once we got out of basics, we'd be sent to the front line. Well, Wesley, he figured things a little bit differently because you know he was, he was from a rich family and he didn't get along very well with the other officers because, well, he was smarter than all of them. And so the other reason was his daddy decided to pull some strings because he's rich, he could do that. He pulled some strings and got him assigned to officer training school somewhere down in Texas. When we did ship out, I didn't know where he went. I didn't see him again. But I have to tell you, <laughs> I sort of felt sorry for those cowboys in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing I know, I'm sitting somewhere in a field, in a trench, in France. Sergeant says, go over the top. 
And we did. And as soon as we did, the shooting starts. And it was shooting like I'd never heard shooting before. And when it was over, I think I was the only one left. It was dark, except for a full moon. They call that a bomber's moon. That's right. I sat and waited, as still as I could be. I'm here to tell you that was the longest night in my life. Yes. At daybreak, off in the distance, I spied a row of trees. And I thought, well, if I could hide behind one of them trees, I'd be safer than I am sitting out here in this field. So I decided I, I'll start crawling. I'll stay as low as I can, and I'll start crawling. It was about 50 yards away. So, so I start. 40 yards. I'm going to make it 30, 10 yards, and suddenly, get it! machine gun starts and I'm crawling as fast as I can and keep it as low as I can to the ground so that I don't get hit by a bullet. I get there and I get behind the tree that I can find and I grab behind it and I sink down and I'm safe. And I'm thanking God, oh thank you for letting me be alive. Amen. And I thought, well maybe, maybe there's somebody else here besides me. So I Using my training, sounded like a whistle. <whistles> Nothing. So I had to think. And, and, and I thought, well, if I holler out, the Germans already know where I am. They've been shooting at me. What? It's not going to hurt anything. So I decided to yell out. So I did. Anybody there? Took a second or two. But then, right from that next ridge up, sort of another row of trees. In the shadows, I watch roll down that little hill a pine cone. <laughs> and it comes and it hits me on the boot. I know what some of you are thinking. It was a pine cone. <laughs> And I'll tell you, it scared me to death. Then I looked up, I peered into the shadows of those trees, and lo and behold, there were three mud crunchers just like me. Now they weren't officers, and they weren't even from my troop. But I wasn't alone. So we we made signals to each other that we're going to go in the fur ridge over. We're going to meet, meet behind one of the biggest tree over there. So we make plans. And so we get, we get our stuff ready. And we start to head over. And as soon as we light out, the machine gun starts again. And then you hear in the distance, you hear our artillery cranking up. And you know that that means only one thing that the German bombers aren't far behind and we're moving as fast as we can and then suddenly come, boom! The bombs are dropping, the machine guns going, there's barbed wire everywhere. We're running as fast as we can, but we don't know where we're going. There's different directions being hollered out by all of us. We're trying to get somewhere, but we don't know where. And then I see, out in a big grape field, there's one of our tanks with the hatch open. So in my best rear trailer lungs, I holler, Tank! 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 And all four, four, four of us start running as fast as we can and we scramble up the side. One's in. Two goes in. Three in. I'm number four. I crawl in. We close the hatch and we clamber up in the bottom and grab each other and hug each other because we're so glad just to be alive. Amen. And then I realize, do you know who number three is? <laughs> Number three is none other than Townsend Wesley Alcott the third. <laughs> I looked at him and I said, son, ain't you supposed to be at officer training school? This boy 
that would not say one word to me in basic training. He looked at me, eyes wide as saucers, and he grabbed me and he hugged me like I was his long lost brother. You know, the bombs are still getting closer. You can hear them in the distance. And we're all stuck in this, this thing called a tank. And back in those days, a tank was, was a newfangled thing. And nobody knew nothing about it. And, and so we might as well have been sitting in a spaceship. And, and I looked at, at Wesley and I said, do you know how to run this thing? Did you learn that? And you know what? Praise the Lord. He said, I think I can. And, and I was like, thank you, Jesus. This Amen. smart, rich city kid yes. is going to save our lives. So he crawls down to the controls, and he's sitting there, and he's playing around and looking around. He starts making these grunting sounds. And I'm going, well, let's go. But five minutes goes by. It seemed like five minutes. And we hadn't gone nowhere. And I'm like, oh, come on. So I decided to tell him, Wesley, let me take a look. I don't think he liked that very much. But I crawled down, and you know what? Praise the Lord in heaven. You know what, what, a, what a, a, a tank is? It ain't nothing but a caterpillar farm tractor with a shell on it. I said, praise the Lord. Hunker down, folks. We are going to plow this great field. And we head out, and I start going, and I'm just thanking God that we're, we're alive. And I look into the peephole, and in the distance through that peephole, there's a church steeple. Amen. It's the prettiest, most beautiful sight I ever did see. And we head towards it. <clears throat> that was safety. We get there, and we're all safe. And we all return to our units, and... I never saw those boys again, not even Wesley. <laughs> but I thank God that He allowed me to spend that time and to know Wesley. Because He taught me the best lesson I ever learned. Philippians 2 7. Call the for me, please, Mother. But he made of himself of no reputation and took on the form of a servant. Amen. You see, when Jesus came into this world, people was expecting a king. A king sitting on a throne with a crown on his head. But instead, he wasn't born in grandeur like that. We got a baby. Born born in a stable, in a manger, with animals all around, to the poorest of poor. There was no grandeur. We had to accept Him, and the people back then had to accept Jesus, the Savior, just simply by faith. I thank the Lord for giving me that opportunity that night. Because that lesson I learned will go with me the rest of my life and I can pass down to my children and family. Amen. Praise the Lord. Family, let's sing. Thank you for listening.
Mama, I have got to speak. Now listen, back then I was silly and immature, but now I'm a woman. Denise. Oh, daddy, okay, don't worry. Just like I said, I was silly and immature back then. But now everything is going to be all right. Now, you know, Dennis and I, we're the twins. I'm the oldest by four minutes. <laughs> yes, Dennis was a complete total surprise. I was halfway out of bed and ready to go home when he started coming. A complete surprise. Yes, we've heard that over and over again. Thank you, Mother. <laughs> Anyhow, Dennis and I, we go to the Colloway Bible School. But it costs too much for us to go together, so we have to trade off years. And this is my year on. <laughs> and Dennis, he won't ever be going back. He graduated. He's a real preacher now. And we are so proud. Yeah, we're proud. Anyhow, we're proud. Like I said, this is my year on. And well, I've been doing a lot of thinking and praying and soul searching. And I just cannot imagine some of the foolish mess that I made y'all listen to in the years past. You know that first year we was here, I told you about running off to Charlotte to try to be Scarlett O'Hara in that movie. There <laughs> be! <laughs> well, we all know that did not work out because I am not in that movie. <laughs> in the second year I was here, I had this wonderful idea to do home missions at our church. So, I set up the fellowship hall like a beauty card. We was going to sing, we was going to have devotions, and just have some lemonade and some cookies, all while I was giving the ladies of our church permanence. <laughs> well, we had such a great time until... I started taking them perm rods out <laughs> and their hair come out with <laughs> Needless to say, none of them women go to our church anymore. <laughs> and then the next year I was here, I told you about us signing June up for the Christian Lonely Hearts Club. I am not lonely. I'm not lonely, Daddy. I know, I know. Oh yeah, Daddy got really, really mad because for about a month, every two times a day, this old man <laughs> and this old Impala, he'd come driving by with his hand out the window, smoking a cigarette, <laughs> looking for June. His name was Ed Earl. Why do you know that? I do not know. Anyhow, like I said, you know, this is my year on Bible school, and I've been doing a lot of thinking and praying. <laughs> and the reason that I wanted to get up here and talk to y'all tonight, even though Mom and Dad threatened me with a whooping, <laughs> I just wanted to repent and ask for your forgiveness for my past endeavors here at the Mount Pleasant. <laughs> but you know, let me ask you one question before I get into that. Apologies and all. Raise your hand if you saw Gone with the Wind. Here we go. <laughs> well, you know as well as I do that that old Vivian Lee was a lot older than I was. There would have been no way that this Sales that could have given me that part because I was definitely too young. Anyhow, and as far as in women and in permanence go, well, look at June and Mom back there. <laughs> it's been over a year and all her hair grew back. <laughs> <laughs> and June, the only reason that I signed her up for that Lonely Hearts Club is out of love. I was worried about my sister. I did not want her ending up an old maid like Miss Mall Miss. I mean, really. Like I said, I'm here tonight to ask for your forgiveness. 
forgiveness. Oh. And oh. so anyhow, here it goes. You know, I've been going to Bible school this year and I've been in the chapel every night down on my hands and knees praying. And I thought about different things that I could do to serve God. I've asked him to guide my heart and to show me his will what to do with my life. And I've went over several different scenarios. The first one I thought maybe I could be a foreign missionary, you know, like Lottie Moon. But with the war going on, they ain't letting nobody in China. So besides that, rice. <laughs> and so then I thought maybe I could be a nurse. If old Vivian Lee could handle it, well, I don't know who I could. <laughs> then I thought maybe about just getting married, having a few kids, and maybe joining the Sanders family singers with more. Kind of like the Von Trapp family, you know. Anyhow, then I started hearing this voice in my head. And it was Mama. <laughs> Y'all children have hit 40 years on me, and do some kind of Bible verse that y'all may say. But anyhow, I thought to myself that it's 40 years that I cannot afford if I'm going to be in pet church. And then I thought, well, Maybe I'd be a school teacher. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> then I thought about all them kids and with their old runny noses and God knows where their hands have been on my beautiful dresses. I said, N-O, spell snow. <laughs> so one night as I was in the chapel, I was all by myself and I just said, Lord, guide me. Use me. Use my life for your will. And y'all are not going to believe God spoke to me. Really? He said, Gunners. <laughs> I said, Oh, yes, Lord. Thank God, Dennis. I said, My brother? Yes. Thank you, Lord. I know exactly what you're saying, Lord. And so tonight, in front of all y'all nice people and my family, they don't even know it yet. I'm going to tell you what the Lord has told me to do with my life. I have quit Bible school and joined the USO.
Dennis is turning. Oh, it's what? Inspiring. Oh, yeah. oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. oh, Dennis is going to help with that. Yeah. Oh, Dennis, good, good, good. Let Dennis have a turn. Saying the thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Dennis Sanders. I'm one of the twins. He's the boy. <laughs> <laughs> A Reverend Oak Thorpe lets me stand here, because I'm a real preacher now, since last June. I've done eight sermons, four baptisms, one revival, and no funerals, but that's because nobody died yet. Amen. <laughs> you already know I'm shipping off to boot camp day after tomorrow. I wasn't drafted. I enlisted in the Marines. I'll probably see some of you fellas on the bus with me Friday. Uh, but as much as Mama and everybody is carrying on, I'm not scared a bit. No, sir, I'm ready to go. Dad gave me a 410 shotgun when I was 10, so I knew how to shoot. I can run and crawl and duck. Daddy and Uncle Stanley say that uh, boot camp is hard and fighting is worse. Uh, but it can't be much worse than siding wheat. And I've done that run alongside them, then got home and milked two cows and fed the chickens. David was a teenager when he faced Goliath. So was Daniel in the lion's den. I'm glad President Roosevelt put us in the war. America should be a great arsenal for democracy. Amen. And I want to be part of it. The Lord created war, and he taught us about war. The Lord called me to preach, and the Lord called me to do battle. Now, I don't know if they'll make me a chaplain or a fighting man. I'd be honored to be either. Jesus Christ was born this very night, knowing just when and how he was going to die. Well, I'm glad I don't have that information. Because I surely don't have the courage and strength of Jesus. But I know I'm right with the Lord and I'm ready to meet my maker if he sees fit to take me. And if the Lord sees fit to spare me, then I'll be right along the front lines to pray the dying boy's souls on into battle. Amen. This is not a sad time. This is a great time. This is a devil we can see and like Jericho, knock him down. Amen. Now, before we get to singing again, I just want to say so long to all y'all in Mount Pleasant. You've been awfully nice to us, and I really appreciate it. Miss Maude and Miss Myrtle, pay no attention to my sister Denise. <laughs> you're fine just the way you are. Oh, you're such a sweet heart. <laughs> uh, Reverend Oglethorpe, you're a fine preacher, and you taught me a lot. Uncle Stanley, I'm going to miss singing with you. Denise, you won't be joining the USO, so you milk snowball and bones for me, okay? I'm just kidding. I just want you to And June, who always listens and is on my side no matter what, take care of our dogs, Rusty and Bobtail. Play with them and don't let them get fat. <laughs> Daddy, you're the bravest man I know. And lastly, Mama, Psalm 144, David's prayer for victory. Praise be to the Lord my rock who tradeth my hands for war and my fingers for battle. He is my loving God and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield in whom I take refuge. Man is like a breath. His days are like a fleeting shadow. Part your heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains so that they smoke. Amen. 
reach down your hand from on high. Deliver me and rescue me from the mighty waters, from the land of foreigners. Amen. Amen. Let's sing. <laughs> Onward, Christian soldiers, marching on to war, with the cross of Jesus going on before, Christ the royal master leads against the Yeah.
little break now. Yeah, let's take a little break. Um, we need to go light that Christmas tree out front and old Big Head's promised to pick us up a batch of snow cream. Y'all need to go grab a coat, y'all will freeze the icicles out there. Oh my goodness. Oh, let's go light that tree and see if we can try it down those winds. Oh, what a night, what a night.
and he gets to wear a real cowboy hat and a real cowboy outfit, and he gets to ride on a real Hollywood horse. <laughs> he told me it don't matter if you mess up, you can just do it over and over and over again. Now I read in the magazine where that old Vivian Lee, when she is a gnawing on that old rotten turnip, took her three times. Six guns at Sunday. <laughs> I guess with your outlaw past, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what do they call that in the movie business? Um, Typecasting? That's it. Yeah. Oh. Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't I go ahead and sing? Y'all wouldn't mind if I sang a little bit, would you? Oh. My good friend, Gene Austin, he wrote this song. He allowed me to do it for y'all this evening. Mike, let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> Now, Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen, there was Comet and Cupid and Donner and Blitzen. But do you recall that most famous reindeer of all? What's the upshot of that story? 
What a jackass can ruin a lifetime of work. Oh, oh now come on. Y'all know we all got a little burrow in each of us. Listen, mine was a thousand pound you. I mean, I'm here to tell you, in just one instance, I lost everything. And, and Brother Mervin here told it right. I ended up in prison. 18 months of hard labor. And listen, I deserved every bit of it. Well, when I was getting out of prison, I didn't know where in the world my life would be. So I reached out to my brother Burl. You know what he said to me? He said, come home. Oh, now it wasn't a cakewalk for any of us. I mean, I knew, just knew that this family was going to shoot me down the road and call me a no-count from now till Sunday. But you know what? In spite of everything, they welcomed me back with open arms. I mean, I hadn't so much as sung or picked up a guitar since I'd been in prison. But when we started singing together, I gotta tell you, it sounded really good. I mean, we sounded so sweet, we got so excited, we decided we was gonna enter the quartet convention that Labor Day weekend. And let me tell you, <coughs> We started singing at that convention. Them harmonies were so sweet, it would almost make your teeth hurt. Well, I remember on the last day of the convention, this old boy come up to me. He never met him before. And he looked at me and he said, uh, Hey, son, would you like to go to Nashville and record a couple of songs? Well, I looked at him and thought, He's pulling my leg. But this boy went on and on and, I mean, he meant business. He wanted me to go to Nashville and record about 12 songs. And he's going to pay me. I mean, I about jumped up and said, when's the next train leave to Nashville? <laughs> and then it was kind of like a dose of paragor hit me. <laughs> and I was reminded of my family. And I knew I had to take it to them. Well, I knew they weren't going to let me go. I mean, I was throwing a wrench in everything. We had dates from now till Christmas and beyond. And here I was throwing them in a lurch a man short. <coughs> that tree out there. But you know, you know what this family done? This family right here. They let me go. And they were even happy for me. <coughs> you know, when I think about what the Lord's done in my life. I realize something. The Lord doesn't care anything about your talent. No. What the Lord really cares about is your character. That young man sitting right there has more character right now than I did at 39 years of age. <coughs> What's the difference? He learned how to grow up in the Lord. And this family right here, because of that, has given me back my faith. You know, I heard it told before. I heard it's called carrying on trailer. And when we get to heaven, you know what God's really looking for in us? He's looking for how we set with our faith. And how we sat with our fellow man. <coughs> and I tell you right now, when I think of my life with the Lord, it wouldn't be nothing without this family. Y'all want to go on about <coughs> me being on the radio and in pictures? <coughs> you want to make over somebody? Make over this family right here. Gave me that. Oh, I'm so thrilled with all the Lord's doing in my life. I mean, y'all think I'm the big stuff up here. I ain't nothing. Come on, family, let's sing a little bit. Let's sing some of them old Sanders family favorites that we don't know well. Y'all mind that if we sing a little bit more?
Mason tree. Oh, yes. <laughs> he got all of this. That smoke out of that tree, yeah. Oh, yeah.
Are you sure? I'm positive. I just found my hat.
In Alaska, in Alaska, the young people that they hunt for walrus for the Christmas feast. Yeah, they don't believe this. It says right here. They take that walrus hide uh -huh. and they stretch it out as far as they can, about three to five feet in the air. And they take <coughs> one of the Eskimos and they throw it on top and it bounces 15 to 20 feet in the air. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hope Sounds like run. Run. And This is the song they sing when they do it. Oh. What does this song have to do with throwing Eskimos in the air? Because it's fun. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh, this is the one where we switch. Yeah. Come on, Jimmy. Yo, yo, yo. This is oh. so clever. <laughs> what does it have to do with Eskimos being thrown in the sky? Okay, well, let's try. Yes, let's sing. Are you fixed? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs>
Well, we're going to talk about those elves for just a minute. I reckon they're about this tall, and they've got pointy noses and pointy ears, and they just scurry all around that workshop, just like little mice in corn crib. Just like children. <laughs> you think the elves are good or bad? Good. They're good. They are tap, tap, tapping away all year long with their hammers, making those toys for Santa to bring. But, what would happen if one of those elves decides to cut up and he stomps on up to Mr. Santa Claus and he says, I don't want to make these tricycles anymore. Here's your hammer. I'm going to play with the reindeer. And a little girl down here says, and she goes over to Mrs. Santa Claus and she pulls on the hem of her skirt and she says, I don't want to wear these shoes anymore. They hurt my feet. The bells are smashed and they don't make any more noise. And the meanness spreads through the North Pole like a guy. Oh. And boys are over here and they're drinking and they're fighting. And the girls are over here and they're smoking and wearing lipstick. Oh. <laughs> and not another toy gets made. Now what does that mean for me and you? That means we wake up on Christmas morning with nothing under our Christmas trees but lint. Now what would you do if you were Santa Claus? I know what I'd do. I'd blister those little elves behind so the Santa could use them to guide his sleigh with their shiny red bottles. Oh. <laughs> sure would. Yeah, I do that. <laughs> now, what does Santa expect from his elves? He expects them to do their chores, to mind him, and have a good attitude. What does Santa expect from us? He expects us to listen to our mamas and daddies, do our chores, and have a good attitude. And what does the good Lord expect? Not a thing more. He wants you to listen to your mamas and daddies, do your chores, have a good attitude, and not just at Christmas, but all year long. Amen. Now what do you think Santa does if you are bad? You don't get a thing. <coughs> what does the good Lord do if you're bad? He sends you to everlasting hell. Oh. <laughs> oh. Now, That's so rough here. Do you want to be like those bad little elves over here smoking and drinking and cutting up the rain with reindeer? Or do you want to be like those good little elves? <laughs> Listening to your mamas, doing your chores, and getting a switch when you stray? I think I know the answer. Jesus is just like the Lord's little elf, and he's just tap, tap, tapping away in your heart. Get all that hateful sin out. He wants you to open your hearts to all this treasure chest full of goodness. <coughs> Jesus wants you to run to him every day, just like you run to your Christmas trees. Now, what a Christmas tree our Savior could be. Oh, not like this dried up mess back here or that burning twig out front. <laughs> no. You have gold, frankincense, and myrrh hanging from his tips. And he's has the star of Bethlehem as his crown. And underneath he has... Christmas bells are ringing, caroling, caroling through the snow. 
I don't think the Lord's going to give us quiet time for a while. So, on, on, on second thought, no, no, no. I paid this thing off yesterday and it's burning a hole in my pocket. I want you to know that I've not worked myself up into a lather over this just tonight. Been paying on this thing for 18 long months. And I've been praying on it for a whole lot longer. So that this be a sign of my contemplation, my hope, and my faith. Lord, please give me the words. Miss June, it's, it's no secret that uh, we have been seeing each other for some time. Four years. <laughs> <laughs> and in this time, my, uh, my uh, affection? affection for you is, has grown from something that's more than just friends. I know I'm a, a tough man to read. I keep my emotions pretty much under my bed. Don't worry, okay. Mom. And I'm with you. My stomach hurts. My palms get all sweaty. And I get frequent nosebleeds. So, so either I am dying or I'm in love. I want to ask you this in front of all these people. Maybe you won't say no. <laughs> Miss June, uh, I would be honored if you would fight the good fight of faith and be together. I would be honored if you would be my Mrs. Oglethorpe. Oh. Oh. June, wear this ring and be my bride. Oh, <laughs> Mervyn, 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 how could you ask me something like that in front of all these people? I mean, this is perhaps the hardest thing I've ever had to say. Well, ever since I was little, I've always known I wasn't much to look at. No, I mean, not so bad that people would point and stare. But when Mama dressed me up, I looked like Eleanor Roosevelt in a baby bonnet. <laughs> <laughs> and when we played Baby Jesus, the twins were always Mary and Joseph, and our front label was the baby, and I'd end up some kind of livestock. <laughs> you know, I can't sing like the rest of my family, and, you know, I play the bells for a really long time, and, I shake a tambourine, but my place has always been in the back. I sign a little bit, but I have never met a deaf person. And if I did, they'd probably teach me a thing or two. <laughs> and you go and ask me a question like this. Something that every girl has longed to hear and practices answering over and over. But me... Marriage has never been in my plans. I'm that old maid that every family needs to nurse their old folks back to hell. <laughs> and to, to rock somebody else's baby. I'm the sister whose skirt you hide behind because you got caught sneaking off to a barn dance. <laughs> or I hold your head up because you're sick as the devil because you just had to try dipping snuff. <laughs> And you know, not just Mary, not just plain Mary, but Mary to a preacher. That's a tall order for the strongest of women. I mean, sitting stiff back on the front row every Sunday morning, <laughs> in sickness and in health, and acting all enthralled by a sermon that you've heard practice umpteen times at home. And keep 
been tracking every ailment of every single person in the congregation. I don't even know what facial neuralgia is. And carrying a pound cake over every time one of them's born or one of them dies. <laughs> and doing all that in a town that smells like a great big pickle every day of the year. <laughs> I just can't imagine what I've done in my small little life to deserve such a kind and gentle man. Is that yes? <laughs> yes, Marvin, I'll be your Mrs.
Oh, come on, you faithful. Can't sing it again for about four months now. <laughs> of course, the stars will have it out about next week. <laughs> Martin, 
might have to open these right here. Because yeah. I think they'll make here, sense. This one's yours. <laughs> 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 he used to be our daddy. He did yes. burrow first. I know he's, he's singing out the audience. He's done burrow about ten times in this show. <laughs> Mike, this one's for you. Thank you. You have, you have done more than you ever know. Oh. Mike is, Mike is adding a new, a new wonderful album on the theater. He helped us so much. Please go ahead. I think it will make sense. Share it on Facebook. Let people know what's going on in our little area. Because we have so much talent and so many great things coming up. And thank you for being a part of that support. Come be a part of it. You'll yes. have a ball. Yes. I promise. And listen, we need actors. We need stage people. We need help with props and sets and all those things. So if you want to volunteer, we've got space for you. And we'd love to have you. And we need an audience. Yes. yes. <laughs> Saturday. It's 7, 
at 7. Right here. 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 Right